this this is the city of history mm -hmm. and uh, i've given you a bit of it okay. so i would like to give you out you know, Mazuru Mobi. Oh, and this guy is going to <laughs> Charlie. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. uh, my name is Maya. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, so um, we have a lot of people out there who really want to know the history of Elimina Castle. And he's telling me that a guy that I need to meet. So, it's over to you. Right yeah, now. Uh, we are in Elmina Castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Portuguese first arrived in 1471. When they came, they met the then king called Nana Kwamana Ansa. Based upon agreements, he released this portion of land for them to put up a temporary structure. Actually, the main idea was that they wanted a place for them to settle and do their business in terms of gold, ivory, spice, and so on. All the rooms on the ground floor were are store rooms. Later, the Portuguese changed the idea from good to human tree. Therefore, the store rooms were being converted to dungeons where captives were kept awaiting for shipment. This castle is talking about 1,000 captives at a time. About 600 men and 400 women in every three months, at times the number could be more. On the 29th of August 1637, the Dutch fought the Portuguese with the support from the locals and they took over the castle. Among the Europeans, the Dutch spent longer time over here, 235 years. In 1872, the castle was no more important to the Dutch they were living. Therefore, the Dutch swapped. They went for land in Sumatra, Indonesia, and the English occupied over here. In this castle, only the Portuguese and the Dutch, they were here for the slavery activities. Mm -hmm. For the British, they escaped this castle. In 1948, this place was used as a police training school. That's why the metal bars were placed. So the policemen were going with the iron bars up and down for training, exercise. Later, they transferred them to Windy Bay, now called Windy Bar. Okay. As it now, this very building is 537 years. This is the biggest and the oldest castle in the whole of West Africa. Oh, wow. That doesn't mean that Elmina uh, is the original name of this town. No. The frequent supply of gold the Portuguese were getting from here, they call this place the mines. El Mina, El Mina, El Mina. Oh, At times you hear Edna, Edna as a local oh, name. Oh, Cape Coast. Uh, it's not also the name of this town. Okay. Uh, the right word is Aldea. In Arabic, it means harbor or port. Aldea, village. But the locals corrupted the way to Edina, Edina, Edina. The original name of this place is Ano Mansa. Ano Mansa, which means inexhaustible waters. Ano Mansa Man. He was the founder of this town. And as you can see, there are two rooms over there. With the exception of those two rooms, about 600 men were spread out. They were kept in various rooms on the ground floor. The one with the skull, the crossbones, that's a condemned cell. Very condemned cell. Yeah. The difficult male captives, those who tried to escape, like the freedom fighters, they were kept in, they were starved to death. No food, no water, till they die. None of them went in and came back alive. That's where we have the symbol here. It's original symbol by the Dutch. These are just peep holes. They will look through to see whether those inside, they are dead or not. And then when you are dead? They will just remove the dead body, they will tie them to stones, they will throw them to the sea. For them to sink and go down. Yeah. The other one with the metal gates was for the soldiers who misbehaved. At one point, soldiers, I mean their own soldiers. Their own soldiers. What happened was that at one point, one of the Dutch governors, Governor Hodgenbrook, was murdered in the town by the locals. So the soldiers were restricted about their movement. Those who went out without permission beyond their territory were detained in this room. Others were fighting among themselves. They were kept away to be disciplined. Few hours they were released. But even even look at the the holes in it's it. It's even well ventilated. Well ventilated. Yeah. A slave to them was like a commodity, an asset to them. They were not seen as humans. Yeah. And you know, one thing about African history, we have so many misconceptions about African history. Yeah. We need to tell our own story. There is this proverb. Uh we say until the lion has his historian, the hunter will always be a hero. If we the Africans we're able to tell our own story from outside. There'll be a time that the story will be twisted to tell us. This is why I brought what we call Africa to the world, for sure. Africans to tell their own story. And Very I'm good. glad that you are actually telling this real story, yeah. what really happened sure. in here. 
I would love us to take us around because I've seen the male dungeon. Yeah. And then, is there any female dungeon too? Yes, we are moving to female dungeon. Okay. Then we go to the point of no return, okay. where our ancestors were taken to different places. Okay. Very terrible. And sometimes people normally ask this question that because the Europeans were doing business, mm -hmm. if their motive was mm -hmm. to gain much profit, then they should taking good care of them rather than allowing them to die and so on. Is it wickedness, evil? From my point of view, the supply of the captives were more. It wasn't in scarcity. They never mind because if they die, they will still get some. Wow. And before the Europeans came, the Africans were having their own system of slavery. That was domestic type of slavery. Or common as an indentured servant, like a free man. A person who has the opportunity to own property, marry and give birth. Mm -hmm. All like the chattel slavery by the Europeans were different assets altogether. So captives of wars were given out as slaves. Okay. Criminals, thieves, deputies were sold out as slaves. Some towns and villages were raided by the Europeans. Some chiefs could not have collaborated to exchange from their servant. But my question is, let's ask ourselves frankly, mm. has it really stopped as of now? You think um, slavery is still going on? It's still going on, a different dimension. Different For me, I, I think the slavery that is going on is like a worker, someone works yeah. the entire day and you give him a hundred dollar yeah. a month. That's slavery too. What nice slavery. So and where are we now? Now we are in the female section. Oh. You know, uh, the coastline of West Africa were termed as a white man's grave. So the Europeans never came along with their families. Only men were here. Some of the officers were sexually abusing the women in this castle. The governor would stand at the top. That's a balcony. He would then order the soldiers to open the doors for the women to be assembled here. He would look through, then he would make his choice. We have this metal ball here, cannonball. Initially, we used to have many of this. They were changed through them. The women who were difficult, those who were resistant to be raped by the soldiers, the chains within the cannonballs would be tied around their legs. No food, no water. Whether it's raining or shining, they'll be here. So the time, they'll give up. They did that just to put fear in them, to breaking down their spirits. When the ships had arrived, some women were likely seen to be pregnant. They were separated. Houses were built in the town for the pregnant ones. They were still to give birth. Later, the children were brought back to the castle to be educated as the new officers. Their mothers remained here as cooks to the castle, domestic workers to the castle. In 1637, some of the Dutch officers moved to the town. They customarily married the women over there and they had children with them. That's why along the coastal zones, we have so many Europeans' names over here. Van Dyke, Van der Poy, Vroom, De Heer, Duncan, French, and the light color skin or the mixed blood Africans. They are very common over here. Don't forget, it brought about disunity among the Africans and the Africans themselves. People were looking down upon your fellow Africans. Divide, conquer, and rule. There was a program held in this room. Last four years, people volunteered to sleep in this room for one night. They just need experience how our ancestors went through. Re-enactment of the slave trade. They volunteered online. Some from US, UK, Nigeria, they were all blacks. Yeah. And because the captives were half naked, those who slept here for the program used distance to cover themselves, to demonstrate with the chains around their hands. Yeah. But I don't think even those chains that they used to tie them looks like this. No, no, big, bigger ones. These are just small, small. Yeah. So sad. I think, don't think and I can. Think over here, too, about 130 women were kept here. Out of the number of captives that came here, only one third of them survived in this castle. Three out of ten survived over here. Children were not counted as a person. They were just added to an adult and sold as one person. The concentration was not on the children, rather with the adult, but mistakenly, some of the people were captured while some of the babies at their back. Uh, in this castle, we are talking of 1,000 captives in every three months. In one year, we have about 4,000 captives. And the slave trade lasted for almost 400 years. Those who died in their various forests were not counted. So a lot. In Ghana alone, the Europeans built about 40 forts and castles along the coastal zones from Kite to Azim. There was a similar one in Senegal, the Gore Island. I was there. Yeah, Zanzibar I in Tanzania. There. Yeah. There Without fort in Benin. I've never been there. Two in Nigeria, Badar in Calabar State. Mm. Fort Jesus in Kenya. We had a lot. Been to the Fort Jesus in Kenya yeah. too. Wow. Looking at the thickness of the wall, the size of the wall, there's no way you can escape. escape None exactly. of the captives escaped over here. 
none of them. So escape. all this place was dungeon. I've seen another extra yes. one. All over we are moving through the, some of the dangers, especially the largest dungeon for the female captives. There is a strong stench in that room. Yeah, uh, we could have used chemicals to clean that place, but don't forget this history. We have to maintain the originality of this place. That's why we have the stench here. About 150 women were kept here for one month, two months, or three months. They are still in their various rooms. Depends on the arrival of the ships, how often the ships will come. Buckets were placed at various corners where they were expected for them to ease themselves in those buckets. Not all the captives were from Ghana. The mode of transportation as at that time was by foot. Those who made it here were very weak. During their second month of staying in their various rooms, some of them could not walk from the middle of the dungeon to where the buckets were placed. Therefore, they did everything on the floor. Feces, urine, vomiting, blood, and they slept in it. There were no mats for them. That's the original floor they slept on. All the big entrances were closed with metal gates. The air from the small doors was not enough for those at the back. That was the other source of ventilation to them. It was even connected to a magazine. They were keeping their guns, gunpowder, chemicals in that room. If there is a leakage over the accidental, the scent would just move straight here, polluted the air, and kill them. The dead ones, as I said, were tied to stones and thrown into the sea. All the flowers at the back by our brothers and sisters from the diaspora in the memory of those who died over here. We are now moving to the point of no return. It's very terrible. I don't think I'm going to do these videos anymore because the more I do this kind of videos, the more I get more emotional. Like, yes, it is it, it, uh, very, very emotional. Yeah. And you know, uh, history defines who you are. Exactly. If you don't know your history, you don't know your identity. Exactly. Yeah. You're right. In order to keep the history book for the next generation, you'll be able to compile all the fat information, the book from for our younger ones. Yes. Learn to know the history. Exactly. Yeah. Because some of the literature uh, books that we read are from the side of the Europeans. Yes, yeah. yeah. We so need to we write our story. story. Yes. When the ships had arrived, the strong women, those who survived, through all that brutalities, they made to pass here to the point of no return. Pass here? Yes. There were steps over there. The room is very dark. That's the nature of the room. It's very dark. So once the male captives were using the main entrance, the women also passed through the side. You can just imagine somebody being kidnapped, captured from the hinterlands for the first time or seeing the ocean. The reaction that the person put on, yeah, they were just struggling with them. Many of them died out of that. So we are moving through the mill dungeon, then to the point of no return. For the building aspect, it's in its original state. That's the yeah. original state. Yeah. All the architectural design that you are seeing is much of the much. Dutch. That's the mill slave dungeon. We just came from the female side. We are now moving through the mill dungeon. In this particular room, about 150 to 200 men were kept over here. At the same time, a transit passage to the point of no return. The room at the back was just a storeroom for the branded equipment. Most of the captives were branded. Hot metals with the major names, initials, were placed here on their forehead or at their back for identification. Many of them died on the Yeah. Hot metal, like tattoo. Yeah. Slave exits to waiting boats. One thing that people know as this, uh, you know, the initial idea of putting out this structure was for good, good. ivory, spice or mm. good. That was what they informed the chief. Yeah. Quickly they changed to human trade. So who knows that the initial idea could be a camouflage. Exactly. You so see? they lied. Sure. And they still lied. Yet we are still entertaining them. And due to the emotional aspect of the tour, at times we don't blend the tour with the white to avoid any embarrassment, any confusion. So it do happen. Yeah, because sometimes it's very, very emotional, especially to our brothers yeah. from diaspora. Yeah. So we are now moving to the point of no return. Yeah, it's very dark here.
We are now in a room of no return. This is a gate of no return. In this room, we normally uh, have just one minute silence over here for those who die, lost their lives. Yeah. May the souls for departed ones rest in peace. We believe that there are spirits around. So the bottles of wine, the schnapps, and so on. Sometimes the chiefs and the elders over here, they normally come to perform some rituals, prayers, and so for the departed ones. All these flowers at the back by our brothers and sisters from the diaspora. Yeah, the member of those who died in those. People normally trace the ancestral route to this place. In this room, many of the captives, they broke down in tears over here, went bitter, because seeing their parents and other relatives were far from realization. Through these gates, some of them were sent to America's West Indies, some part of Europe, for them to work in their various mines, plantations, and cotton farms. The gate was very wide. At the time of gold, ivory, spices, and so on, it was big. Later, when they changed the idea to human trade, they narrowed the gates to restrict movement. And about five or ten people were chained to each other. They were moving on the sideways like this. The sea water was closer by then. Now it has receded. The ships will be at the shore before they will bring smaller boats to convey the captives into. Looking at the small size of the gate, by the time they will be here for one, two, or three months, they will just lose weight. They can easily pass through. Yeah. Even though they were fed, something small to see in them. Yeah. This is sad. Like this is the gate. No return. Like yes. This is in Gory Island. Sumiga. Because they said that this is the gate of no return. That is why His Excellency Akufuado decided to make this year as the year of return. I've returned, even though I'm not in the diaspora, but I just entered and just returned. It's about time you also accept the fact that your ancestors were from me. I'm not telling you that all of you are from Ghana, but try as much as possible to know your roots. Check the DNA, ancestral DNA, get to know which part of Africa are you from. And whatever you have, when you check and you know that you're from Ghana, make sure you return to this place and let them know that they said it's the way of no return. But when you return, your ancestors will be happy that finally their great great grandson or their great great granddaughter finally returned to them. So, what is the Ghana baby? And uh, I think I'm not going to do more of this episode because anytime I do this episode, I get sad, emotional, and then. Uh, I get back home, I have to struggle to get my book back again. And um, I'm going to see you in the next one. And thank you so much for taking us around. We really appreciate it. Nice for you to return. Thank you. Now it's a room of return. return. So we nice. have to return. Yes. Okay.